Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to the 18th episode of my Ask Matt series where I answer questions and go into more detail on topics suggested by you, the viewer. Today's topic comes from Russell. He had some questions about these guys, router guide bushings. What exactly are they and how do you use them? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what these things are, how to set them up and use them, and then we'll take a look at a couple examples of these things in use. So let's get started. So these are guide bushings, and as you can see, they come with various different inside and outside diameters, as well as different lengths of the barrel. Now this style here is called the Porter Cable style of guide bushings because they were, I guess, manufactured originally by Porter Cable. But other manufacturers have different mounting styles, such as this one from Bosch. Um, and just because you have this style here doesn't mean you can't use this style in your router. Um, for different manufacturers, you can get an adapter such as this one. This allows you to use a Porter Cable style guide bushing in the Bosch router. So how you mount these things in your router is going to depend on the router itself. My little DeWalt router here takes these Porter Cable bushings and they just pop right in here on the bottom and then this little band gets screwed into the other side. That's it. Now the Bosch router has a guide bushing holder that you can install into it and then you can just put in there really quickly and it's really easy to get them on and off. So this is where the power of that guide bushing really comes in is because you can turn any bit you want into a pattern bit, sort of like this one. You could turn this straight spiral bit into a pattern bit. You could turn this overload bit into a pattern bit or you could turn this dovetail bit, for instance, into a pattern bit, all using just a guide bushing. The same concept is going to be true here, except the only difference is the guide bushing itself is mounted to the router and not the bit. And because of that, there is a certain amount of offset you have to take into account when making your patterns. But that's pretty easy. So as you can see, the bits would just protrude through the guide bushing, and the guide bushing would ride against your work, and the bits would do their cutting. So this is true of any of these bits, including this dovetail bit, for instance. So let's take a look at this offset concept in a little more detail because this is going to be really important for setting up your templates and patterns. So right now I have this half inch spiral bit and this three quarter inch outside diameter guide bushing. The guide bushing out here is where your template will ride and then the cutter will be back here cutting the workpiece. So the difference between this half inch and three quarter inch outside diameter is a quarter inch which means that there is an eighth of an inch radius or the difference between the outside of the guide bushing and the outside of the cutter is an eighth of an inch. So when you're making your templates or your jigs, you need to take that eighth of an inch into account because the cutter does not cut exactly at the outside part of the guide bushing like a pattern bit would. So one last bit of setup on the router itself is that the base plate needs to be centered. On all routers, the base plate is held in with screws in these larger holes which allows this base plate to wiggle around so you can actually center this base to the center of the spindle on the router. And that can be done really easily with one of these. This is a centering cone. You can mount this into your router's collet and then put your router into the base plate or into its base. I can just plunge the router down until the base plate contacts the cone, and then I can tighten down the screws. Probably the most common place you're gonna see a guide bushing used is on one of these, a dovetail jig. The guide bushing will ride along the fingers in the jig, and the bit will remove the waste to reveal either the tail board, or in this example, the pin board. So let's take a look at a few examples of using these guide bushings throughout your shop. This first I'm gonna show you is how to drill a hole with your router. And here I have a half inch spiral bit with a three quarter inch outer diameter guide bushing. And all I'm gonna use is this block of wood, this little guide. So a three quarter inch hole in the block with a three quarter inch guide bushing means that when the guide bushing goes into the block, the router cannot move. That way you can plunge the router down and drill a hole with your spiral bit. Now if you wanna make an even bigger hole, that's easy as well. On this end here, I have a one inch hole, same three quarter inch diameter guide bushing, same half inch router bit, but now when I put the guide bushing down into the hole, there's a little bit more room for the guide bushing to move around. And in this case, this setup will give you a three quarter inch diameter hole. So this technique is gonna be really helpful if you have a large workpiece that you can't get underneath your drill press 
and you need that hole to be nice and perpendicular or you don't have a drill press for instance. So this would be really easy to just clamp this down to like this workbench for instance, plunge the router down and it'll have a hole exactly where I want it really quickly and accurately as well. Now another thing you can do with the same concept is you can take a block, a nice long block and drill a bunch of these holes in it sequentially, evenly spaced down the line and then you can have a shelf pin drilling jig that way. You can just walk down the line with your router and drill all your shelf pins in exactly the right locations really quickly, really effectively, and really accurately. So how about a dead simple way to make some mortises? This jig is made up of three strips. The two outside strips, their width doesn't really matter. They're just there to make a base for the router. The inside one is cut in half and slid apart from each other to create a window that the guide bushing will fit down into. So this strip is cut to the same width as the diameter of the guide bushing. In my case, for this example, this is a three quarter inch guide bushing. So that guide bushing will fit right down in there and go back and forth with the router attached to it. This is about as bare bones as you can get for a jig like this. You can make it a lot more functional by adding a fence, for instance, or even making the stops adjustable. So there you go, a really simple way to make some mortises. This was cut with that half inch spiral bit again. And one thing to keep in mind when setting up this jig is the offset of the guide bushing versus the bit you're using. In my case, that's an eighth of an inch. So this mortise is two and three quarter inches wide and the opening in the jig itself is three inches wide. That's one eighth of an inch per side for a total difference of a quarter inch. And lastly, here's the technique that brought about Russell's question. In this example, I'm creating the grooves for an eighth inch wide perimeter inlay. I'm using an eighth inch diameter bit with the guide bushing that rides against the curved template. In this case, the guide bushing was necessary because you can't get a pattern bit that is only an eighth of an inch wide. So I hope these few examples of using a guide bushing inspires you to find some creative way to use this in your shop as well. And really, the guide bushing just makes the router even more of a versatile tool. If you use guide bushings a lot in your shop and you have a favorite technique, please feel free to leave those down in the comments below. It's always great to potentially learn something new and if someone else is looking through there looking for some new techniques, they'll be able to find something there as well. If you have a future Ask Matt topic suggestion, please feel free to leave those in the comments below as well. Let me know what you thought about this one. And as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment as always. I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.